Today's video, we're going to be checking out the McFarlane Toys Movie Maniacs Series 7. This is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, Aaron. Okay, so this might be a little bit more of a difficult piece to review or at least to take apart because she is basically the sum of her parts. She's one of those display pieces that McFarlane loved to do and loved to churn out every once in a while. If we look at just Aaron, measurement wise, the figure is about five inches tall. That's only because she's in a crouched running position. If you, however, though, take the entire construct, because after all, this is going to be what dictates how much space you have on a shelf, the display as a whole is about 10 inches high and roughly about, about seven to seven and a half inches wide. Sure, you could actually take the figure off the display stand, which is a little bit trickier. Just wiggle her off here. A lot of times as you're trying to take her off, you may, I'm being very, very careful here not to knock everything else down. Uh, she has got a considerable peg on the underside, which looks like it's plastic. That's not necessarily a good thing because of course, you know, you can only do that so many times that plastic may eventually fray and break. This also came out of the packaging loose and uh, I just kind of looked at the instructions. Just I just put it at the back for the time being. Okay, so we'll look at the figure first, and I use the term figure very loosely here because it's not really so much a figure. It's got, sure, some posability to it, but the rest of the figure really is based more on displaying it like what you saw at the beginning of the review. Then we'll kind of look at the everything else that she comes with. So looking at the figure initially, it's rough. Well, no, that's not that's not fair. Does it look like her... Maybe no. I mean, it's it's definitely one of the better head sculpts, but I don't think I would say it does look like Aaron from the movie. Now, granted, the scene in which the character is running through the dangled meat and the racks and, and whatnot, she's not the most prettiest of characters at that moment. Of course, she's r fleeing and running for her life. So, of course, that anguish would be looking on her face as well. But do I do I think the figure looks like her? I would probably say no. Maybe from some angles, yes. Generally speaking, though, I would say no. Does not necessarily make for a bad figure. In fact, a lot, the face sculpt is good, even if it don't think it necessarily looks like her. I like uh, the fact that she's got her open mouth, so you can see at least her teeth in there. Could possibly make out a tongue. I don't think. I don't think that's really necessarily the case, though. The eyes are painted in nicely. McFarlane Toys, I don't know, I've noticed this with a couple of their figures, that periodically you may find a figure that's got a line, kind of just a line on the face. I've noticed that, I think with Sarah Connor as well, it was like this weird, awkward line that just appears out of nowhere on the face. I don't know if that's just sculpting. Uh, the hair is sculpted quite nicely. Not really much in the way of additional paint, granted. But overall, pretty happy with the face, or pretty happy... Not necessarily looking like Aaron, but pretty nice looking face nonetheless. The rest of her body, she has a pair of jeans on with uh, kind of not platform shoes, but kind of like elevated shoes, heeled shoes or heeled boots, I suppose. The coloring of her jeans is fairly accurate. It's nice stitch work there. Uh, she's got a bit of a like, darker kind of paint that's been added to some of the areas of her pants, so they look like they're they're dingied and dirtied up. They're not clean-looking pair of jeans. Can also be said for the top. Top looks like it's covered in a little bit of sweat, dirt, blood, you name it. Whatever adventures, horrible adventures she had gone through this entire movie, can be read on her shirt here. Got a couple of little gashes on her arms. Very dirtied complexion on her arms, very dirty looking skin, especially on the side here as well. And you've got some of that carried over also into her back. 
uh, pose of the figure is is ad adequate, of course, for the fact that she's running through this. This is not a figure that you could do anything with. You literally couldn't do anything with this figure other than putting her on that display base. She doesn't have a hole or anything like that to accommodate just a regular display stand. So unfortunately, you're forced to put it on this. Now, it's not to say that you have to put all of this on here. Uh, when you take this out of the packaging, I love you, McFarlane. When you take this out of packaging, there is absolutely zero instructions. The only thing you could go by, let me just pull it out right now. The only thing you could go by was the back of the packaging. I kind of used this as my reference point for trying to put this together. I did notice though, and I'll talk about this a little bit more, that this part of the rack doesn't match the photo here. I, I thought it was just simply a case I just take it this off and flip it around, but it looks like it's actually pegged into there. So I, yeah, I wouldn't take I wouldn't take that off. Um, but yeah, there's the there's the picture of what the figure's supposed to look like. I actually do think it looks a lot more like her in the image as what we ended up getting here. Colors are also a lot lighter on this particular image of the figure versus what we ultimately got. That's that's across the board. Anybody who has picked up figures along the way, you always know that the prototype images always look ten times better than what we ultimately get here. Still not a bad figure though. So here's how everything comes together. Basically you've got your bottom base and the figure pegs into the front. There's a rod that comes inside as well that attaches to the under rack of the the uh, the meat or the beef there, the cow. And uh, then you have to add, this part is, is one piece with your chains, they're all attached. And then this part here is a separate piece as well as this here. So you have to attach this to this, attach this to the base, and attach her with the rod attaching to the the uh, the cow. The, I don't know why I'm, th I'm brain stumping myself here by coming up with the name of it, with leg of, it's a side of cow, I guess. And that's basically how everything comes together. Okay, yeah, got it, okay, good. I don't really know why McFarlane doesn't insist on using instructions. Even DC collectibles for figures that have a Batarang shows you how the Batarang goes into the hand. NECA has included instructions for if you want to put together a figure. Less complex than this, I might add. McFarlane doesn't include it. Never has. I don't think they really have for anything, actually. So let's have a look at this, this contraption, this setup. Again, this piece here was a separate piece. It doesn't look like it actually attaches to anything. It just looks like it sits just loose on the top here. Like that. I also did notice when I took everything out of packaging that a lot of these little uh, hooks and stuff were kind of caught with themselves. I had to kind of unfeed everything. There is very little, there is zero give actually. So if you think that you can move a lot of these, the answer would be no, they're, they're fixed in their position. What was needed to be required, or what I had to do, was attach the the le the, uh, the side of cow there, and it just attaches with the hook. The hook doesn't actually, or well, at the initial time of entering it, it, didn't seem as if the hook was going to penetrate properly into the flesh of this, you know, cow. Uh, then you've got the little rod here that attaches on the underside here, just to support it. So I don't know why it's. I guess. I'm answering my question with the answer immediately. I don't know why they wouldn't have used a clear peg because the black, the black plastic is very obvious. It's there, but I guess using clear plastic that would have probably snapped quite quickly. So black would probably have been the, the route to go. This little chain was also separate, had to be added. Uh, just kind of sourced it to the image that was used there. They've got it just on the back here, the back frame. So that's where I ended up putting it. I don't know if I would say I really like the design of the cow or what was the left overs of the cow. It clearly has some indications of some additional white paint that's added to it. It's okay, I suppose. It gets the point across of where it's where the scene is taking place. Let's look at the bottom flooring, which actually looks pretty cool, I have to admit. Got some real dirtied areas where it just looks like, you know, blood has dripped onto it organ, juices, all that good delicious stuff has trickled itself all over the bottom flooring here. And then of course you've got a drainage. Gotta have a drainage in that sort of area. That that stuff would just sit indefinitely. 
in the process, I've noticed that the chain fell off, but we'll just kind of leave it off for the time being. Some nice rust work here on the side frames, these little side posts here. We've added some little brown rusted areas here on the side, which, add, which adds to the overall just design, making it look like it's old, which is really what the the a whole diorama is really supposed to be. Of course, you've got some additional rusting up at the top there as well. The only downside to this particular base is the same thing, the same problem that you get with any of these sort of setups. More importantly, the one that kind of brings my attention, well, reminds me of this, is the tortured soul line. A lot of those that had contraptions are next to impossible if you ever want to take these apart and let's say store them away. As a collector, of course, your ta your tastes may change, but you never really always want to get, a get rid of stuff that you have. So say, for example, you have this on display, you've taken the time and the care to put it together, then there's going to be that time where maybe your tastes are shifting. Maybe you don't want to necessarily have Aaron from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake out on display. Well, what do you do? You're going to have to try to take this apart. And because this is all really thin, brittle plastic, there's a good potential. In fact, there's a good guarantee that some of these little parts may break. And certainly they may also break when you eventually have these in bags. So I don't really know the route you could go. I, I suppose you could take, if you ever want to take these apart, do your best, of course, to take them apart. But I would probably, in this case, because they are thin, maybe try to sandwich them in or wrap them around bubble wrap or something that's going to kind of keep everything from breaking. And only hope that the next time you take this out, when you start getting that little bit of a glimmer, that little pop of idea in your head, you know, I really would like to put the Texas Chainsaw Massacre figures back on a display or the Tortured Soul line or whatever line it was back on display. You can only hope that when you take them out of packaging that they, or take them out of the bags or wherever you've stored them, that they're gonna look as good as when you initially put them out on display. Big problem when it comes to McFarland stuff, Really, the idea of when you're buying these, you're buying them, you're going to be putting them on display, and the intent is that they're always going to indefinitely look like this. <laughs> As a collector, you know that that's never the case. Okay, so let's have a look at her posability, and then we'll kind of wrap up this video. Her head does rotate. I mean, it's the head is kind of posed to face this way. So if you rotate it any other way, it looks okay, but I mean, if she's running like this, Probably doesn't make sense that her head's going to be pointing forward like this. Her head's probably going to be pointing the direction, yeah, the direction that they intended you to have it. Arms swivel out. Again, absolutely no idea why. I mean, you can go, hey, you know, I mean, it does make absolutely no sense. If the figure is supposed to be pre-posed, McFarlane, you want it. Let's say, let's get the, everything lined up. Those a gash has to line up with itself. Everything here has to line up. Doesn't have to look disjointed. And the head you you want us to have looking like this. Why not just make this a statue? It makes no sense to put this as a posable figure because ultimately, like, look at this. She's got she got leg articulation. Why would you do this? Why would any of this make sense? You know, tra la la. You could have her leg like this. It could look broken, but it doesn't make any sense. If the figure is intended to look like this, for example. Why not just make the figure a statue and just leave it at that? But we'll go ahead and hold the base, just kind of wiggle, 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 and get her back into the base. And then you can, you know, adjust her leg accordingly. One of the other cool things that could have been also the case, we just slide Aaron over and we bring in the just recently looked at Leatherface from also the remake and also from McFarlane Toys Movie Maniacs Series 7. It would have also been really cool and a very small addition. But if they had added a peg at the back of her base, not spe scene specific, of course, but just to, as a collector who wants to display these pieces, put a little peg at the back of her base, like right, even like right there could have then pegged Leatherface at the back of it as if he was chasing her. Of course, it's not necessarily the case, but still, it would have looked really cool, and then you could have incorporated both pieces together. As it stands currently, they're dependent on each other, their own specific setup. You can't really combine the two, but it should have been an idea that maybe they could have tossed around as well. One thing I really like about this particular piece that some of the other movie maniacs have not really accomplished is the sense of movement. 
most of the time figures are pretty much staction or in standing poses. Here we have actually an instance in which you have a character running and that's a really neat looking way to display the piece. Ultimately it then does mean that the figure, whatever little posability that she has, you really can't pose her in any other fashion than what you've got right now. Anything else beyond this, it looks a little on the silly side. From the setup, the racking that she's running through does have a really imposing presence to it, but it's ultimately one of those cases that if you ever do pick this up in the span of collecting it in your life, and you decide you want to take this apart, good luck. That's all I have to say. The racking, for example, pegs into two peg holes on the sides of the base. So ultimately, because that is very thin, brittle plastic, if you ever want to try to wiggle that back out, you may potentially break some of those pegs that are attaching the racks to the said bottom. Everything else kind of comes together quite nicely. I mean, it does have a real busy look to it, but ultimately that's how it looked in the movie. And I think they actually did a pretty good job of translating that to plastic form. It's definitely one of those cases where McFarlane Toys took a chance because they could ultimately have just released an Aaron on her own, maybe on a grassy backdrop or something different other than this. But they really did take chances by giving us a very elaborate looking display base and a really elaborate setup that we had here with Aaron. It's a really nice looking piece. Just pray you never have to take it apart. Wrap it up very thin thickly in bubble wrap and hope that the next time you take this back back out on display it's going to look as good as it did when you first set it up today though we were having a look at the mcfarland toys movie maniacs series 7 and this was the texas chainsaw massacre remake aaron or aaron from the texas chainsaw massacre remake if you guys like videos like this, certainly hit it with a like. Always like getting new likes. New subscribers are also welcome to this channel. So if you haven't had a chance yet to hit that little subscribe button down below, it's just below this video. It's a little area that says subscribe, and it'll open your world to new videos on this channel. Also, if you want to go and head over to my main page after watching this particular video, see if there's any videos that I've posted in the last little while that you may have missed out on. Uh, feel free to check out those videos, and always like reading new comments in those older videos. So... Uh, get to going doing that. Certainly more videos are going to be coming your way, guys, both horror-related and non-horror-related. So, of course, we want to have a little bit of both here on this channel. It's always nice to do the horror stuff. I love doing the horror figures, but also really big into superhero stuff, too, as well. So this channel is a little bit of both. So, of course, respect that when it maybe comes time to, for example, a horror fan seeing a superhero video on this channel, there's always going to be a horror figure review right around the corner. So always guarantee of that. Thanks again for watching, guys. As always, I'll see you guys next time.